Hello planet Earth, great news! There is a lot of good stuff happening here! Woo! Excuse me guys, let me just drop down to 3D so we can transmit. Great news planet Earth, there is a lot of good stuff happening! Woo! There is a soccer ball that when you kick it, it contains the kinetic energy and you can use it for a light and power source. Woo! The socket is an energy generating soccer ball. It's actually a ball that harnesses the kinetic energy that's generated during play and then stores that power inside of the ball so you can use it as an off-grid power source. In most places in the developing world, once the sun goes down, that's really the end of your day. Either you're using a kerosene lamp or you're using a diesel generator that has incredibly horrible fumes. And so this provides a clean, renewable source of power that is actually pretty fun to, to charge up. 30 minutes of play can actually give you over three hours of LED light. I could hand someone a solar panel, I could hand someone a hand crank pump. All those products are great. But the thing is, people I don't usually ask how a solar panel works, they just assume it works. They don't really ask how a hand crank works, they just kind of assume it works. We have people saying, wait a minute, but so this, this ball, how is, is it that, is it this, is it that? Because you're taking something that's so close to them, that seems so simple, something they had written off as a heuristic of, oh, I get it, I get how soccer balls work. And you're just shattering that. So fucking cool. You know what else is cool? Take an MDMA with your parents for a totally spiritual reason. Actually, she had a spinal nerve block where they actually killed the nerve to stop the pain. That didn't work. Then an intrathecal pump, that didn't work. So uh, it was hell. My job was at that point to support her in every possible way I could. We had exhausted everything. I said, maybe we can approach it in a different way. There have been people who have had remarkable spiritual experiences uh, with psychedelics. Maybe you'll tap into some source of healing that we can't even imagine. I knew that I needed to have someone who was an expert at being a psychedelic therapist. But it wasn't until we tried MDMA that she had the miracle respite. Like, my daughter was back again. Both her dad and I were offered the opportunity to do the MDMA with her because it sometimes can put you in the same wavelength. In the moment, as it was happening, I thought, my daughter is dying. And right now, in this moment, I am so grateful to be with her. And Mara's dad was stroking her, and I was reading, she was hearing my voice. She opened her eyes and looked at us with this expression of complete and utter joy and died. It was a gift. It was her last gift to us. Two other news now. Bitches on Instagram will be getting their titties out, be putting the modeling industries and promotional ambassadors out of business. You guys are getting sent free shit more than bloggers because of the fake people that you buy online to follow you. Oh my God, I've got 28,000 followers on Instagram, so I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna go to work today at Target. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take a photo just like, just like this. My friend and absolute babe, Nicole Arba, explains exactly what I'm talking about here, better than me. Time we have a chat, sexy bitches. Don't be scared, I come in peace, bringing likes from strangers and free bikinis. All the stuff you like. So much fucking hair. For real bitches, it's time to have a chat. Consider this a state of the union address for holes of the internet. Holes, as far as the eye can see. Insta whores, Facebook cunts. Bring it on in, girls. This has been weighing on me for a while. I can't go on the internet without seeing your titties, your ass, or basically up your fallopian tubes because you are an Instagram model. There's nothing wrong with being a gorgeous, hot, sexy, 
fiery woman, but there's a lot of do-nothing bitches running the internet right now, and I'm not cool with it. I can't even take credit for that. That is my UFC bae, Rhonda, who calls girls do-nothing bitches. Do-nothing bitches. Girls who are just trying to be hot and wait for some guy to come along and take care of them. Perhaps an athlete that you accidentally got pregnant with. <laughs> you poked holes in the condom, you psycho. <laughs> My psycho. Mommy, how was I made? I poked holes in the condom so your dad would have to pay for you. And my lips. And my new bibs. It's really hard for me to blank. Or maybe you're vying for an old millionaire. It's funny watching internet bitches post photos of their Louis Vuitton bags and Chanel shoes with hashtag blessed, but they never show you photos of the old man's balls they're sucking to hashtag bless them. Do your balls hang low, do it while to and fro. Can you tie them in and not kick blessed? I'm not saying not to be gorgeous and confident and sexy. Do that, do you, do your thing. But do something else too. I'm hashtag sorry, not sorry. Shout out 2014. You were a good year. You were a good year. You, yeah, me and you got along. But I think you're better than this. I think we're all better than this. You're giving yourself an expiry date. Last week. So there. Oh god. Haha, <laughs> lol. Oh look, it's a pine cone. Oh no, it's, a, it's an ant. No, no, it's a vagina. No, it's definitely a pine cone. Whoa. And now to some homegrown Aussie news. Female com oh female, who the fuck says female? Comedian Hannah Gadsby has been taking a series of pictures on Instagram of selfies replicating those that Ruby Rose takes of herself. And the results are fucking hilarious. Check it out. Do you want some hot sauce, hot sauce, hot sauce? Yes, I do, me or do? Why you ask of course? Do you want some hot what? sauce, hot sauce, hot sauce? What is, what is this? Why are there so many fake slap of phone requests? Who are you from Mex- Put your boobs away! Who are you? No! No! No common friends! No! 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 And now for some other close to home news. In Adelaide, in Rundle Mall more specifically, people have done some pop-up meditation. There's been 10 to 15 people seen sitting around just deep in the zone going through their alpha beta states. I'm not giving a shit if anyone sees them. Fuck yeah, Adelaide. I'm from Adelaide. It's my hometown. I'm so proud right now. Om shanti motherfucker. How good is that shit? Good job. I'm excited the consciousness is a raisin in Australia. So go, Adelaide. Thank you very much. And here's my two thoughts on the topic. People have been allowed in the past a cigarette break or a smoke break for 10 minutes, and that's still allowed, yeah? But if you go out from your job at a cafe and you just want to stare at the sun for 10 minutes and sun gaze and meditate and be in your own space and be at peace, your boss will be like, Oi! Oi! Get back in here, mate! Get back in here! You can't just you can't just stand there and do nothing. You can't just stand there and do nothing. If there's a cigarette in your fucking hand, then that's okay. But you just can't stand there and be in peace. Why aren't you looking at your phone? Why aren't you on Facebook? Why aren't you doing something because you're making me feel uncomfortable with how at peace you are with yourself? <gasps> you got it. Hey, hey, you got it. FYI, a cigarette break is simply a meditation break but with something in your hand, a device, and something that you can get addicted to, nicotine. <gasps> Let's just take away the cigarette for a second. What's smoking? Okay, you're not addicted to, to nicotine. What is the smoking break? Oh my God, you're alone in your own space, not around other people in an office going crazy. You get to be alone. What else are you doing? Oh my God, you're deep breathing. You're taking... <sighs> 15 or 20 deep breaths, but let's just take that away. What are you doing? Taking 15 or 20 deep breaths. Smoke break, meditation break, smoke break, meditation break. Uh, you choose! Who's that chick doing an awesome high five? That's Kehlani. She used to work at Grilled. She was getting paid below average wages and she's young, but she thought, fuck that. I'm going to use my voice. I'm going to speak up for my rights. And she took it to the unions. And you know what? She won! Yeah, uh, we're just not going to pay you what you deserve because uh, we're cunts. Most people. Oh. Oh, okay. I'll, um... Thanks, thanks for letting me work here. I'll, um... Yeah, I'll just get another job. Kehlani and people who know their worth. Um, no, I don't think so because I value 
what I put out as an employee and I know my value as a human. So I'm going to take this to the big cunts and we are going to fucking slam your ass down for equality because just because I'm 20 years old and you're 45 doesn't mean that you have better values than me. In fact, you actually have none. And I'm going to talk about that publicly and get 50 million thousand signatures and send that shit to the government and then circulate it all over the interwebs. Okay, cool. Oh yeah. And give me some aioli. And here we have a fully extended interview with Sting talking about his ayahuasca experience and how he drinks like every year for like 10, 20 years more um, and how it's his biggest spiritual experience ever and how it's his, his connection to what religion is for him and how he understands that he's connected to the trees and every person is connected and that the world is one big sentient being and there's a higher consciousness at play. Fuck Sting, I love you even more. A couple of hundred people in there wearing uh, blue coats and green coats and kind of a uniform with stars on them. I thought, oh, this is some kind of cult. <laughs> and I sort of uh, was immunized against religion as a, as a child. I brought up Catholic and I'm not, not sure what to church to have this experience. But nonetheless, we were there and we sat down in chairs and they, they welcomed us and uh, we handed out this brew, you know, it's about this much brown liquid. And smelt like something uh, you'd get out of a sump outlet, you know, like disgusting. And two and I looked at each other and said, we're going to, everybody drinking it, so we did. I drank it in one, it tasted awful. I handed out some uh, lemon or something to kill, kill the taste. And then we just sat and waited, not really knowing what to expect. Um, and then after about 40 minutes, uh, my, my lips started to tingle and I said, starting to drift off and then I went into some serious uh, uh, terror, I suppose, uh, not being able to navigate exactly who I was or where I was or, or, or what I was. Because when my eyes were shut, I was in this uh, holographic, uh, spinning, geometrical alien world. Open my eyes and everybody else is kind of sleeping or in some kind of trance and I go back and then I start to, uh, to feel like vomiting. My whole body is very uncomfortable. Uh, I don't vomit. I managed, I managed to hold it down, but there's something coursing through every cell in my body, like uh, an intelligence searching with everything. And it, I, I'm tingling and tingling and I'm thinking this is probably the heaviest thing I've ever experienced in my life. Uh, you know, close to a near a near death experience, and these these ge geometric shapes keep transforming in incredible colors, and I'm in this extraordinary world, a little bit like uh, that scene in Kubrick's two thousand and one. You know, the way he's, wherever he's going, and uh, and then I start to have visions of my my life, who I am, me as a, a baby. Me at my conception, believe it or not, this flash of, of light. And then my parents, my grandparents, I start having what feel like race memories, you know, of visions of ships and uh, war, a lot of uh, terrible misery and uh, pain and war battlefields. And I end up in some kind of story where. I'm the observer and I'm watching a man like me, but not me, going through a drama in a war situation where uh, he's being court-martialed for telling his troops not to leave the trench. And then, then he's, sh he's shot by the, the very people he has actually saved. And at this point, I just start crying like a bit. I'm just weeping uncontrollably. And I, you know, I sort of kind of wake up and I look around and everybody else is in their own space. So I go back back to this world. And then uh, that, that pain, that, those tears, they, they sort of bleed into my relationships with women, the, the women I've known, my mother, this whole, I'm basically reassessing my entire life. It's like my life passes before me, as, as they say, 
happens when you die. So I'm having this death experience. And then this goes on for a, a good hour. And then I start to sort of navigate <laughs> and feel kind of comfortable and kind of supported by this experience. Like it feels like love. I feel deeply protected and whole and, and utterly connected with myself, with the room. And if I look out of the window into the jungle, connected visually now with every leaf on the tree by a, a line of energy and the stars. And I am wired to the entire cosmos. <laughs> I look, I look at the ground and I see a crack in the ground and then inside that crack there's a little flower growing and I, that's my brother. <laughs> Every, everything, stone, inanimate chairs, pieces of plastic, I'm completely and utterly connected to. And I realize for the first time, this is the only genuine religious experience I've ever had. Gonna flood into the universe and you're gonna thank for sharing your gifts with each and every one when they recognize that they are